Extra dimensions. I hope there is such a thing as extra dimensions. OK, I plan to talk about extra dimensions today and the possibility that there could be other dimensions beside the three we see. Usually we only see three dimensions of space. There's one pointing in that direction, one pointing straight forward into you, and then one up down as well. And there's also time, which we think is another dimension. Here's three, you can see two fingers and a thumb. They're pointing in three directions. Those are making up my three space dimensions that we're all used to. Sometimes we call them X, Y and Z or Z for our American friends. And um, now the question is, are there any more? OK, now what a daft question that is, because you can see there's no more space, right? But in the world of mathematics, you can have as many as you like. When you first think about extra dimensions, a lot of films and things get mixed up with parallel universes, universes which are com completely different, where there's space aliens who'd come through and eat your grandmother or something like that. So in mathematics, it's perfectly viable. You can do it. You just need to write down um, some extra coordinates. You need to think what to call them and write them down and there you've got them. It turns out that in some of the models of particle physics that try to unify all the forces of nature, in a particular set of models called string theory models, they only make sense uh, mathematically if you actually, actually have more than three dimensions. You allow there to be extra dimensions. But what we're actually talking about is just a different direction I can point in. So as opposed to just the usual three directions, there might be another one. I can't actually point in it or see it. But, and one of the questions is why we can't yet see them. How can I have these extra dimensions and yet still not see them? Well, there are two possible ways that people have thought of. The first is you hide them, right? Hide them, make them really, really small so that actually you don't realise they're there. And th th there's a way, I think you, you might be able to think, see this and, and realise it makes sense. If you, um, if you were to uh, have a, a cable, I've got a phone charger here and the surface of it, the surface of the wire's got two dimensions. One long thin dimension, it's an extended dimension, and one short round dimension, it's called a compact dimension. When, you, when the cable's really close to you, you can see that the cable's got one dimension, which is the length of it, but it's got another dimension which is taking you around it because it's a little circle, right? Now if I took this cable and just walked all the way to the end of the building or to the end of a garden and showed you the cable again, your eyes would no longer be able to recognise that there was this, this extra dimension. All it would see is this thin line. And if you didn't know better that that was a cable, you'd say, that's got one dimension. It's just got the length of that line. But then as you walked up to it, you'd go, oh, how stupid. It actually has a second dimension. Now effectively what you're doing as you walk closer to that extra dimension is you're, you're magnifying it. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the idea of in, in, in the world of string theory and in, in, these, in the models of these extra dimensions is it's a, it's a similar process. The three spatial dimensions we can, we can see, but the extra dimensions are just wrapped up into a very small ball. So small that in order to probe them you'd have to go to very high energies that's the equivalent of magnifying them. In the, in the higher dimensional space-time, there could be a four-dimensional sheet with three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. And we're stuck on this and just can't leave it at all. We try, but we can't even point in that direction. And nothing we see around us can either, like light stuck in that, one, in that three dimensions and sound is, and all the particles we think we know about. But one particle might not, or one force might not, called gravity, and that could go, expand into the extra dimensions. We call it into the bulk, away from our own brain. And that could be used to explain why gravity is so much weaker than other forces. Why not say that the extra dimensions are there, but they just don't interact with us? Light, in other words, you know, how do we perceive things? We perceive things with light, mainly. And that's the, that's the way we see events around us, that's the way we see the directions. So if you have extra dimensions in which light doesn't go, then you're not going to see it. And then the way you will test for these extra dimensions is by having gravity still working in these extra dimensions. Well, gravity's weak. The entire Earth, with all its particles, is trying to pull me down into... But... 
one little bench, the electromagnetic force in one bench, can keep me up against all of gravity. So gravity is a lot weaker. And that could be explained because the other forces, like the electromagnetic force, are stuck on our brain. But gravity is allowed to permeate into the other dimensions. And so you look for the effects of gravity affecting objects moving in these extra dimensions. And that's one, that's, this type of, these type of models are called brain world models. Oh, I don't mean the brain in my head that thinks. I mean a shortening of the word membrane, which is like a sheet or film. Well, most people approach extra dimensions with caution. They don't like the idea. They like the idea maybe of going to other worlds and things, but don't like the idea of being able to point in another way. Because it's counterintuitive, we can't do it. But that doesn't mean it's not right. You're saying your wife's not a scientist. What does she yeah. think when you talk to her about extra dimensions? Um, I think she sometimes wishes I'd go there. But <laughs> I think she finds it all fascinating. That, that just the, it, it, because it puts to one side the whole image of it, the stereotypical image of a scientist that doesn't have much of an imagination. I mean, you've, how, how big an imagination have you got to have to be able to be prepared to start thinking about a universe which involves things that you can't yet see? Well, string theory predicts that there'll be nine dimensions of space and one of time. So, since we can already see three dimensions of space and one of time, that leaves six to be coiled up very tightly.